Before wasting time with repetitive steps in Photoshop, get to know how you can take advantage of actions. I'm just in Bridge right now, and I'm double-clicking on Guitar underscore 2, which is in my Chapter 03 folder. And I want to take maybe hundreds of images and convert them to black and white and change the file size. But I don't want to have to open up each one of those images. So watch how I can take advantage of this. I'm selecting Window Actions to bring up the Actions panel. In the Actions panel are a bunch of default actions. You know, there's a vignette for a selection or frame channel, or you can create a wood frame and many others. I typically ignore the default actions folder and sometimes even throw it away, but I'm creating a new folder to contain my actions called Production. Now, before I start doing the work that is going to be repeated over and over again, I record it. And how I record it is by creating a new action. So I click on the little dog ear document icon in the Actions panel. And in this case, I'll choose Resize Black White. Because what I'm going to do is resize all these images and convert them to black and white. Notice that I can choose a function key and even change the color. The color won't appear in the Actions panel unless you have the Actions panel changed to the button mode. And I'm really not going to use any of that because I'm going to show you how to create a droplet when we're all said and done. So I press record. You know that you're recording because the little red circle appears. And the biggest mistake that new users make is they forget to stop recording. But I'll remind you of that as we're working. So I have this image. First thing I want to do, image, image size. Okay. Make sure resample image is unchecked and change my resolution to 300. Click OK. Notice that that step I just took has been recorded automatically. I want to convert my image to black and white. Before I do that, I'm going to pull up the Layers panel and I'm grabbing the Layers panel by the tab so that I can reposition it and you can see it a little better on my screen. And I am choosing the Add a New Fill or Adjustment Layer button that looks like a half moon down at the bottom of the Layers panel. Now I'm really into non-destructive changes in your Photoshop imagery. So if I choose this and choose black and white, you'll notice that I can turn off or on the black and white feature. Now, here's something really great. When you typically convert something to grayscale, you don't have a lot of control over how the colors are converted. By using this adjustment layer, I can click on a little button that allows me to drag and adjust the colors. So you'll notice that this guitar looks a little dark, and it's probably because this is red and this is blue, so they're kind of dark to begin with. So if I click on this color, and I drag to the left or the right, you'll see that I can make it darker or lighter. Now notice I'm dragging to the right to lighten that color up. And if you notice over on the Adjustments panel, it automatically recognizes that I'm clicking on a red color and it makes the adjustments for me. If I click on the right side and I start dragging, you'll notice that Photoshop sees that this is a blue color and it's automatically adjusting the slider for me. Wow, that's great. So I like this a lot better. That works out just fine. Click on Background. I want to sharpen up this image just a little bit, so I choose Filter, Sharpen, Unsharp Mask. As a default, you'll see that Photoshop will set this. Yours, when you open it up, unless you're a frequent user, will be at 51 and a threshold of zero. You can go all the way from 0 to 500%, and how high you go depends upon the subject matter. So you'll see that I can slide this up, and typically if I don't have a clue what to set my amount at, I will pick 150. And you can either enter that amount in or use your slider. Now this preview, in fact I'll enter it in, 150, this preview up here is at 100% view, which is really critical. and. If I click and hold down, you'll notice that when I sharpened up this image, it actually made it noisy. That's because the threshold and the radius. The radius is stating that, hey, every time I see a pixel that is a slightly different tonal value, in fact, just even one tonal value different, it's probably an edge and it needs to be sharpened. 
threshold is what will help you. If I change the threshold to 10, for instance, Photoshop will look at the image and say, hey, if the pixel next to this other pixel is within 10 shades of what it is, it's not an edge, keep it smooth, and then as soon as you hit a pixel that is more than 10 shades, that probably is an edge, and that should be sharpened. Now, I'm going to click OK to this, and again, this has all been recorded, all those little steps that I took. One last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to choose Layer, Flatten Image. I'm done. I want it flat. I just wanted a background image. And then stop recording. Okay, so let's test this. I'm pressing F12 to revert this to save. I'm going to the top of my action, Resize BW, and I'm going to press the Play button. And it works. Great. Now I want to apply it to all the images in the Chapter 03 folder. So I'm going to close this up. Don't save it. I'm going to choose File, Automate, Create Droplet. I'm going to choose that I want to take an action I created in production, the only action I created called Resize BW. I'm going to choose where to save the droplet. So in this top Choose button, even though I have an action that's named, I still need to name my droplet. I'll call it Resize. You can even call it the same thing, BW except I will put this in my Project Files folder. Save. Got the right action selected. I want to put all of my images in a folder. Now keep this in mind. You can say None and keep the files open, or Save and Close and overwrite your originals, or you can say, you know what, I'm going to play it safe. I'm going to keep all my originals intact, and I'm going to save these changed files and put them in a different folder, and then click on Choose and then I can choose the folder. In fact, I'll create a new folder inside my projects file called Done. Great. Choose. If I want to, I can change the name. It will stay the same name if you do not go through this extra step, which is fine because it is actually putting it in a separate Done folder. But if I want it to put this in another folder with a new name, I can type Guitar put a two-digit serial number, and then also the extension in. And click OK. Now absolutely nothing happens. That's because I just created a droplet. I haven't actually made it work. I'm going to get rid of my add.jpg because I just don't want it in the mix with the rest. I'm moving that to the trash by right-clicking on that file in Bridge. Yes, go away. And I am now pressing Command Tab because I'm on the Mac and I want to go to my Finder. And then I'll choose to hide others. Here's my folder. Here's my droplet. I simply take my entire folder of images, drag it to my droplet. Every one of those images will be opened. The action will be run on those images and a copy will be saved into the done folder. So look how fast that is. You can go to lunch and come back and look, all your work is done. Yet in Chapter 3 reside all of my originals intact in their original form.